I'm Kate Libby, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and I'd like to welcome you back to another Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here on Facebook where we explore one of the 68,000 objects in the Maritime Museum's collections. So, like many of you, I'm sure that your Facebook feed is like mine, which is to say it is a torrent of political posts. And to take a respite from all of that and hopefully tell a positive story, I wanted to talk about an object that we have here in our waterfowling building that really is an exploration of the commitment of one man to waterfowling in the Chesapeake, something he dearly loved. So this coat um, was owned by a man from Talbot County named Gus Pletschak. And Gus showed up on July 1st every year from 1934 all the way to 1959 to get the very first license for waterfowl shooting in Talbot County. And to me, this says so much about not just the dedication of one person and how much they obviously loved waterfowling here in the Chesapeake, but it also tells another story. We're, go we're looking ahead to Waterfowl Festival in Easton coming up this weekend and there will be a lot of sport hunters in town. And the thing to understand about hunting and the Chesapeake waterfowl hunting today is that there is zero commercial harvest at all. In 1918, Canada and the United States worked together to form the first real wildlife conservation act called the Migratory Bird Treaty Act that protected hundreds of bird species from owls to hummingbirds to robins to migratory waterfowl from commercial harvest. And the idea was that instead, there would become a conservation movement where the numbers of birds were protected and part of the way that they were protected is through licenses and the money that came from licenses bought for the privilege of hunting waterfowl. So with this uh, system established in 1918, what ended up happening is that you had market hunters that had harvested like oysters, crabs, or shad, fish and, and, and oysters from the bay, they were no longer able to hunt another of their harvests, waterfowl. Instead, every year you had to go out, purchase a license for the privilege of harvesting waterfowl, and then hunt a very limited number. Now you can see some of these early ones actually say Talbot County on them. And this reflects an early system of licensing where these licenses were given out county by county instead of statewide the way that they are today. Some of the earliest ones, in fact, are even made out of paper. And they're much more like a driver's license. They list your hair color, your eye color, your date of birth. Um, Later, as you can see, they become sort of the colorful tags that look much more like a modern hunting license um, that you might see. So the thing that I want to, to con convey here and communicate is that this jacket is a beautiful testament to one man's love of sport hunting, just a few birds a season on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, he's signed up, committed and dedicated, looking forward to a season of cold water, early mornings, beautiful sunrises, and the opportunity to harvest just a few birds to take home and roast and savor. So this weekend, um, come see us at the Waterfowl Festival in Easton. Um, we're going to bring our waterfowl exhibition, Ammo, Camo, and Calls, which features a lot of objects like this. We're bringing it to the high school in Easton, Maryland, and I and other staff from the Maritime Museum will be there to talk about the exhibit and talk about Chesapeake heritage and waterfowling. I hope you've enjoyed this session of Chesapeake Treasure today. Join us next week for another object, another story, and another exploration of someone's beautiful dedication to the Chesapeake Bay.